Hey, welcome back. This is the one you've all been waiting for, the big one. You all know Jaime Mossan. Gosh, I think it must have been 12, 13, maybe even 14 years ago that we first brought Jaime in for Mexico to share with all of us all of the exciting information and footage that was being gathered in Mexico. And a few short years after that, we brought Santiago Garza in, who carried on the tradition. And now, for the first time, these two incredible investigators, these, these two tireless, hardworking guys, are joining in a joint presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, there was so much new material, it was impossible to choose between them this year. You're going to get a double barrel shotgun full. This is going to be the e-ticket ride of all e-ticket rides. Ladies and gentlemen, Jaime Mossan and Santiago Garza. Come on out. Thank you. Well, thank you. Well, thank you very much. As you know, we come from Mexico. I am a TV journalist. I worked many years in a show very similar to what you have here, 60 Minutes. I was involved in the investigation of many subjects, and I became involved accidentally in UFOs. And that is why I want to dedicate this presentation to the man who, through his investigation, made me believe, the man who became my inspiration as a human being and also as an investigator, the man who taught me to be very serious, very objective in this phenomenon. And this man is with us tonight. It's very rare that he comes to this kind of events. But as my dear brother, I asked him to come. He didn't know I was going to dedicate this to him. But I, I do this with all my respect and my thankfulness through all this year, through all the, all the knowledge he gave me to help me become, become a, an honest investigator and capable. That is why I want to dedicate this presentation to my dear brother, Mr. Lee Elders. Thank you very much. He was, he inspired many of us through his investigation around the Billy Mayer case, as you know, also almost 30 years ago, and I want to thank him for that. My colleague and friend, Santiago Iturria. Thank you, Jaime. Thank you. I'm glad to be back, my friends, and uh, welcome everybody to this special presentation. And uh, first of all, I wa uh, I like to to say that it's an honor and a and a pleasure to share this scenario with my old friend Jaime Mausan, and to bring you the recent news about the amazing Mexican UFO wave something that m most all of you know by now. And uh, I, I have to tell you, 2005 was an extraordinary year for Mexico, an extraordinary year in which we did not witness only UFOs in the sky, but now we were also interacting with entities humanoids, and aliens. So what you are about to see 
uh, constitute perhaps a new phenomena or several different new phenomena. Uh, I, I would like to say that our experience in Mexico has increased and has reached new levels. We are now witnessing and interacting with strange and very rare things in the sky. And we would like all of you to join us in this fantastic adventure through Mexico, the land of the mysteries and wonders, the land where legend and reality become one. So my friends, welcome and enjoy the experience. Jaime. Well, let's start now with some of the videos that amazed many of you just last year, because this continued just after I left Laughlin on March 2005. You remember this video from June the 10th, 2004, from Miguel Aguila in Guadalajara, where we have probably 500, probably 1,000 objects in the sky. What is very interesting is all these objects moving together from left to right. When we have this, the clouds as a point of reference, we can clearly see how all the objects move together, proving that this video of this event is intelligent. Here, we can see how all of the 500 or 1,000 objects, spheres, are moving together horizontally. We can easily see that this is an intelligent phenomenon. The Guadalajara UFO fleet, a videotape by two witnesses, Miguel Aguila, uh, is considered the most uh, large, the largest uh, UFO fleet of all times. An amazing spectacle in the sky, disconcerting and also surprising. We also remember the video taken by Amado Marquez on June 30, 21st, 2004. That's just 11 days later, we have, where we have a very similar event. We have now probably two to 300 spheres moving through the clouds at the same speed and keeping the same formation. Again, this has to be considered intelligent because we ask many, many experts in this field if it was possible to have balloons flying that way and was considered impossible. Besides the altitude, it was from three to 5,000 feet. This video from uh, Amado Marquez is one of the most uh, uh, spectacular because uh, you can see the formation uh, passing by the clouds and uh, always keeping the configuration, always keeping the configuration, the speed, the distances. So this is another example of the now famous UFO fleets or UFO flotillas. A mystery that is still uh, surprising the people. On February 27th, 2005, just before I came to Laughlin last year, we had this incredible video where we have a hundred objects 
flying at very high speed over the skies of Mexico City. This video from Arturo Robles Hill, who is one of our most famous and respected sky watchers, uh, uh, exhibits a feature uh, dif uh, somehow different because of the speed, the speed that you are seeing here. And uh, at the same time, the objects preserve that configuration. And so this, uh, this is one of these, uh, the most uh, distinguished uh, videos that we have over Mexico City of the UFO fleets. Another of the videos which was considered important from last year before Laughlin, because we have to say now before Laughlin 2005 and after Laughlin 2005. We have seen that when these spheres are very close to each other, they hover. It's like if they are magnetic, they move around. When they keep some distance between them is when they stand still. This, uh, this UFO fleet that you are seeing here is a very interesting, particularly interesting and different because uh, this uh, group of uh, orbs or spheres are translucent, like transparent. However, they look solid. And they, are, they seem to be flashing so this is, this is a, indeed a variation of the patterns of the classic uh, UFO fleets. Also videotaped by Arturo Robles Hill. Now we have some of the videos after my presentation here last year. This is a different city. This is Torreón, Coahuila. A family watching in the sky. Pero mira, no se juntan ninguno, todos llevan una distancia y están fijos, eh. We could consider this a classical, a typical fleet, as we used to have 10 years ago. Now they are very mas massive. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now some, someone of you may wonder, how is it possible that this uh, large number of objects in the sky uh, so continuously uh, appears without causing panic or alarm to the people. Well, you know, there is an awareness already on the Mexican people, an awareness that has extended also to our government authorities, as you will see very soon. April 11, 2005. There were many people watching the skies in Mexico City, and we have different videos, like this one. We have these classical formations. This is a triangle. As a matter of fact, a larger formation, but geometrical. But for the first time, we have something interesting in this event. We can see one whole, one of these objects moves and the other just stays, creating a different formation. Once again, a video from Arturo Robles Hill. Uh, the, the, awful, the awful fleets from Mexico uh, has been uh, increasing the sightings of the UFO fleets. And, of course, we are confident that these are signs. Here we have this movement that we consider intelligent because most of the objects stand still, but one of them came from the top to the bottom and then stood still too, creating a different formation. And as you can see, the geometry is almost perfect. So most probably these are signs. From where? That same day, just half an hour later, the same Arturo Robles Hill got a different video. Another massive sighting. You can see the same color, the same size, every time. You can watch when these objects are very near each other, 
they hover. They are magnetic. When they get apart, they stand still. Somehow I believe this is a three-dimensional configuration. That very same day, Maria Montserrat, a housewife who is part of these sky watchers, got this video in a different area of the city. I say probably thousands of spheres hovering over the city at a very high, high altitude, probably more than 15,000 feet. We don't know why yet this happens. Is this a demonstration? Are they watching us? It's something we don't yet understand. But the season is coming. Uh, we believe this month and next month we are going to have many of these sightings. As you can see, there are so many in this video. And by the way, in a different, very different area from where Arturo Robles Heath got his two videos. This is north of Mexico City, far north, probably 30, 40 kilometers away from the other side. Now, yes, now, as you can see, hundreds of objects in the sky over the most the world's most populated city. It's amazing. And now in the south of the city, from south to north Mexico City is at least 50 kilometers long. And here you have the same object doing this movement familiar to us now, horizontally, and keeping the formations. As you see, this is something very common now. We see these objects moving, like in the military video recorded by the military last year, or I mean 2004, where we saw all these objects moving like in a formation. On uh, June 2005, something extraordinary happened because the governor of a state, Fidel Herrera, became himself a witness. This is the official ceremony that morning. This is Governor Fidel Herrera. In this ceremony, he was delivering the new patrol cars to the police department. Uh, uh, in an Jalapa. official in Jalapa, an official ceremony with the media. And suddenly, he got attention, attracted attention. Look at that, at the sky, up, up, up above. Then governor say, oh, there are many objects there. One, One two, two, three. Four, five, and suddenly six. he say, it seems that the merchants has arrived. Also referring to that popular Latin song, cha cha song, uh, the merchants have arrived. And you can see here the media forget about the ceremony and all of them began seeing the sky, watching the sky, and also videotaping the strange formation in the sky. So there was certain commotion in that uh, ceremony, as you can see here. And this is the actual footage taken by one of the TV network's uh, cameramen. And uh, you can see here three objects perfectly aligned uh, in this uh, take. Of course, the fleet was uh, more extensive, but uh, they were focusing this in these three objects because of the perfect formation, perfect alignment. So there was a commotion. They forget about the ceremony. And all of them were seen in the skies, as you will see right now. And it was uh, hitting the headline news that night on the newscast. And the new season started January 30th, 2006. We have again a massive sighting of spheres over Mexico City. 
for those who still not believe in this, those who think that everything that flies and looks like a sphere is just a balloon. So this 2006 began with great expectation, very promising with this new sighting by uh, Arturo Robles Hill that was in some way announcing that this would be a very intense uh, year in sightings and experiences with, uh, with uh, so much uh, sightings all over the country that uh, sometimes give us, give us really some surprises. Now there's, there are people that always ask us, uh, there are so many objects in the sky, how is it possible that the airplanes doesn't crash? Because you know, Mexico City is the very large city and uh, with intense air traffic, uh, air traffic but uh, there has not been a single, a single accident, a single crash, which results uh, remarkable. Okay, probably at this moment you are asking how this man, these two men from Mexico get so many evidences and we don't get as many in the, U in the U.S where there is more people. And the reason is, is because I have a television show and I present these videos every Sunday night, prime time in national television. That is the difference. In 1991, when we had the eclipse with all these sightings, and I found these prophecies, that it was the time of the meeting with the masters of the stars that became so inspiring to me that I asked people through television to watch the skies with a camera in their hands. I mentioned at that moment that the video was going to become the instrument to demythify this phenomenon, to prove as a real event, not a paranormal event, but a real physical event. Right now, there are so many. I just made a tour through all Mexico. I received more than 100 videos. I haven't been able to watch them. But my country is, I think, given an example to the world, how the societies should behave through this phenomenon. But we need, you need here in the States and in other countries in the world, the participation of the media. I was invited last December to Peru. I gave a historical presentation at the School of War of the Army of Peru. Because as you know, Peru now has conflicts with Chile. And they wanted to know if the reports they are getting from people in Peru are real UFO events or if they could be considered you know, attacks from the enemy or flights from enemy planes. Then I gave my presentation and they asked me, how can we uh, prepare the, Peru, the Peruvian people to do the same thing that you are doing in Mexico because it's amazing. I present them videos that were no more than a week old. And they had already been presented in television. And they were so excited and I said, you have as army, as the television here, to have a show. I will support you with my videos. I will come here to teach the people from Peru how to record how to get together, how to create these groups. Because probably in Peru there are as many sites as in Mexico, I don't know, but according to what I was told, there are many sightings. And if this becomes a conflict, I mean, with Chile, and they, there is a war, I hope not, it would be very stupid. But at that moment, they are going to need to know if what people are reporting are UFOs or are enemy planes? And for that reason, in the School of War of Peru, I was, the, the people there, I mean, 
the attendants were generals, colonels, senators, very private. Nobody knew. The media was not there. They didn't want this to be released. But I tell you, this happened because now they want to really create an awareness in Peru to be helped by the, Mexi by the Peruvian people. Or like the Mexican people is helping the military. And why, that is why the military gave me this historical video two years ago. Do you want to introduce this new team, please? Yeah. Oh, you want me to? This is an incident that took place in October last year that uh, was recorded by the local uh, security es police. This is the mayor of Ramos Arizpe. Uh, who is explaining to the cameras about that incident. That incident uh, was uh, recorded by security camera, the Ramos Arispe uh, uh, government put uh, security cameras all over the city, the town, and uh, one of the cameras recorded an unusual incident because a commander that was uh, doing some surveillance, called the, the central to the 060 uh, emergency phone. And he said, look, at, uh, put the camera to that object. This in the sky looks like the star, but it's very, very bright, bright. Very, very bright. bright. So they immediately in the monitoring center put the camera to that direction. And what, they are, what you are about to see is what happened that, that, that night. Here he's explaining, explaining how expensive these cameras are, how sophisticated they are. They can read a plate from a car uh, 500 meters away, 600 yards away. This is the camera, the actual camera, as you can see, strategic, strategically mounted. Now, the mayor is explaining why they buy these cameras, how much they cost, and this is the director the head of, of the, the police, of, yes, of the center, the, the, the monitoring center. He's also uh, declaring how they received this call from a commander officer. And as you can see, all of them, all of them are coming forward. This is the new attitude of our attorney. Now, this is the actual footage. This guy was already presented in television in Mexico. The astronomers, the scientists, don't know what is this. At the beginning, they tried to explain this as an aberration from the lens. But since the circles are not concentric, since the hole in the middle moves from one side to the next, then can, this cannot be considered to be uh, an aberration of the lens. And besides the uh, personnel of the monitoring center had a visual contact through the windows of the object, uh, and they also described that the object, object was moving, was mo making erratic movements that were re re regis registered by the security camera, as you can see here, Remember, one frame per second. This is not the actual time, okay? But you can see how the object moves and how the center moves, creating this hole. What this, is, this hole is, it's a dimensional door, a wormhole. After this was recorded, there were many sightings in the area. Even when the president went there in November, in the airport, they had to close the airport because a big say, spider web was in the sky. Spider web. Like spider web. We think it could be angel hair or something like that. And then this spider web came down to the airport and completely covered the airport. They don't know what it was, but they had to close the airport for two hours to clean it from this strange material that came from the sky. Two weeks later, Santiago Iturria received from England 
new images. Romunun that had never recorded before, before that day, before Ramos Ari. This is a a photograph of this uh, strange ring was recorded in uh, Sussex two weeks later and uh, took me by surprise because uh, it looks similar to the uh, object in uh, Ramos Arispe. So we made some comparisons and uh, we uh, were able to establish a possible link with incidents taking place in Mexico and also in England. But that was not all because more were to come. Uh, as you can see here, this is a comparison. This is uh, the ring uh, from uh, Sussex and in England and to the right, the one from, they look similar, very similar. In some way, this is a new phenomenon that uh, we were uh, expecting to repeat, repeat, and it did. It repeated itself in England. Two weeks later, is that the way these creatures, these chips come to earth through these holes? I don't know. It's very difficult to know. Hypothetically, these wormholes exist. Nobody has proved that they just is an hypothesis. As you know from Albert Einstein, Stephen Hawking, Carl Sagan and others said that this was possible, but no one has ever proved that they really existed. So when we uh, began discussing uh, this re in this research about this new phenomena, we uh, decide and, well, we comment, could this be the, the initiation of the known, uh, the, the so known uh, dimensional portholes? Of course, we were speculating on certain, but uh, as you can see, in December, another one appeared in England, and uh, we were wondering, maybe this is a new, uh, a new kind of phenomena that is going to appear, telling us something, maybe giving us some clues, some clues how it's possible for an unknown technology, advanced technology, to uh, in some way bend the space-time for certain purposes. Uh, these were theories before uh, we, uh, were, we witnessed these, uh, these events, but we now have visual images, we have now graphic images to analyze, to study, and finally we have a great video, an amazing video that you are going to see. Well, this uh, picture is from December the 3rd, okay? It's a different event. Now we have three events, and there are more. I didn't present them all because Santiago received at least two more from England. And again, I really believe England and Mexico at this moment, in this phenomenon, are connected. Many, many sightings are happening in England. We have the crop circle phenomenon. And in Mexico, we have the fleets phenomenon are probably the sign signals in the sky, the signals on the earth. I remember the Bible. Before the end of times will appear signs in the earth and signs in the sky. Now you are seeing here what we know as a dimensional vortex on 22 December last year, a video that Surprise, it took us by surprise, of course. According to the witness, the hole that you are seeing in the center is like a core, is uh, where the ships come, is like a tunnel. And uh, this uh, video, this footage that was taped in December, opened a, a new perspective to confront this new phenomena that we now define as the dimensional vortex or dimensional portholes uh, phenomena that is happening right now, not only in England, but also in Mexico. Looks like an eye in the sky to me. Something that is looking to us. It's very difficult to explain that video. But if they are portholes, could that be the way that these creatures can fly and move in here? What do I mean with that? Oh, 
on uh, September 12, 1952, in uh, Flatwoods, Virginia, West Virginia, West Virginia, uh, there were many people that saw this kind of creatures in the area. In uh, January 2004, a policeman in Monterrey, Mexico, where Santiago lives, reported a creature like this attacking him in his patrol car. He fainted. This, is, this was a, an incident that caused a complete police mobilization because the police officer that was on duty at uh, 3 o'clock in the morning confronted a strange unknown being uh, that he described as a, as a flying witch according to his testimony because that was the in interpretation that he, he just uh, imagined uh, came to his mind. But this uh, strange entity that, according to his testimony, was flying, was uh, floating above, above the ground, suddenly uh, came to him trying to grab him and to attack me. That was a, a very bizarre incident that uh, in some way uh, awakened or other kind of uh, sightings, fortunately, uh, that did not involve any attack at all, but uh, uh, that make, made us to stay alert because we were expecting some more sightings or some more incidents like this one to repeat again. Can we believe there are flying creatures, flying humanoids? They have been reported around the world. There are not images. We, we started through this web of uh, sky watchers, we started seen them since 2000. This was the first video we got. Then just a month later, in March 2000, we had a second video from these kind of creatures. At, that, at this point, we, we realized that uh, this kind of rare, very rare sightings were repeating and increasing, and then Gerardo Valenzuela videotaped this strange humanoid entity coming almost to a land in Cuernavaca. For the first time, we can see them coming to Earth. And remember, these uh, videos were taped by our respected and, and uh, famous uh, sky watchers, so we don't have any reason to doubt about them. And as a matter of fact, they are the first uh, surprised with this strange and rare but sightings. then, 2005, and then we have now probably one of the most spectacular videos recorded on June 17, 2005. We can clearly see now a humanoid fi figure there with a strange object that is allowing her to fly. If you remember, what we just saw is very similar to that is probably what the policeman saw when he was attacking Monterey. We can clearly see this instrument, this object that is probably used to fly. This is a uh, fantastic video taped by Horacio Roquet at seven o'clock in the morning in over Mexico City. He was uh, going to his, to, his, to his war when he confronted this strange humanoid being just above the roof of the building in front of his home. And uh, he ran away and uh, took his video camera and began taping perhaps the most uh, explicit, the most impressive video of, a, of the flying humanoid ever, as you can see. Then I learned that months before he had recorded this, as you can see, on the 21, 21st of January or February 2005, he recorded this figure flying very, very fast through the sky. And it's very stable, proving that this cannot be anything explainable. At this time, we realized that uh, these sightings were, were going to come more and more, and uh, we were wondering from where. This is from uh, Rich Giordano, 
videotape. Uh, Rich is a good friend of mine. He, he sent me this video, very excited, and said, listen, I just got on tape one of those flying, little flying men that you are filming in Mexico, and I was very surprised. Looks like it has something in the back yes. that allows this creature to fly. So this phenomenon is taking place also in other places. Yes. Thank you. And uh, in, during this investigation, we have been able to locate other cases of similar flying humanoids, not only in Mexico, but now in Chile, in, in England, uh, where have been uh, videotaped also by Skywatcher like Russell Kellett, and, and of course here in the United States, by Rich Ordano, by our friend Ed Sherwood in Santa Monica, a great video. So we are now experiencing a global, a global phenomena involving this special category of uh, strange and rare sightings that we define as the flying humanoid sightings. Still an enigma that we are disconcerting. We don't know still where do these uh, figures come from, but they are appearing more and more often every day. My question is, is probably that the legend of the witches, it was developed because these kind of creatures 500, 600 years ago? Is that the reason we believe in witches that can fly in the sky? Probably people saw that, and that's what they reported. And then there is not a legend, but this, it was probably a proof that this really happened long ago. We always try to, you know, to discredit the old legends, trying to say, no, these people were crazy, they thought everything was possible. But now we have the videos, and that's the big difference. Could you believe there are videos now of probably angels in the sky? Later. <laughs> Later. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's true, it's reality. true. Well, he okay. gave some, some advance about that. No, there are many things. Just wait. <laughs> Keep calm. Okay, uh, last year I presented three different cases that happened in Mexico where I prove that the digital camera now is becoming what the video, to the, to the extraterrestrials, to the creatures in the ground, what the videos are for the UFOs in the sky. Why? Because the digital cameras now can record what we cannot see. We don't see it, but you, you take a picture at night, do it when you hear some noise, even though you don't see a thing, take your camera. Check it in the morning, and probably you will be surprised that you, you will get something. Even though you couldn't see it, your camera will. And if you use a Photoshop in a computer, you can bring it out. And that's what I mentioned last year, because this year something extraordinary happened. This is a normal photograph, and this and is And then we clear this. And then we have this. The, when I receive this, they say, Jaime, do you think it's real or not? And I say, I don't have a clue. That could be a toy. It could be a dummy. How can I know? I mean, the picture is real. The dots, the pixels are real. I can prove this was not fake. But could I prove that this was not a dummy? No, I couldn't. It's possible. But then I said, if this is real, we will have soon other cases similar to this. And this is what has happened. A year later, no, two months later, here, probably you have seen this picture, a man taking photographs in a cemetery without seeing this creature, got this image. Is this real? I don't know. But I think it is. If you see the pixels, you can see, clearly see that this is not a fake. But we need now to prove that this is the real thing. And the only way is to continue keeping this record, receiving more and more evidence of these creatures walking here amongst us. As you see, in the two cases, the witness didn't see what they 
got in their cameras. Then in Juarez City, Mexico, a little girl, a 14-year-old, Sandra, took this photograph. His cousin, Samael, sent me this and asked me for an investigation. I went to the place and I found the little girl very sick in a hospital. Identical. Then I, they asked me not to bother the girl because she was very, very ill. I know there are two more pictures, but I didn't receive them. But then I found two people that I had recorded and investigated many years later, many years before. John Mack made an investigation of the case of these two young men. And he told me, Jaime, this case, after a long investigation, this case is for real. They had a sighting with 11, cre 11 creatures in 1995. They, they, they described those creatures exactly as the one we saw. Then I took the picture, since I couldn't talk to the girl, because she took the picture when she was alone in her house, in the patio of her house, and she got that image. Then I asked these two people, and they told me they are identical. It's exactly what we saw, same color, same, uh, the neck is the same, the, the long arms are the same. Everything is very similar, the size. Phosphorescent, as you see, etc. I saw personally something similar to this years before in, uh, when I was making an investigation at the Rumorosa Sierra. But I couldn't record it, and that is why I don't like to speak about it, because I always think that you need physical evidence to talk about a very important case. Otherwise, but then in Mayo, May 2004, in Juarez City, again, this man takes a photograph and he doesn't realize what is behind him. But with a Photoshop, we can bring it out. Brian Bike, my friend Brian Bike, sent me this and he asked me my opinion and I say, well, it's the same. It's the same as the others. They didn't see it, but the creature is there. It's three-dimensional. It's very tall. When the people that take these pictures don't want money, don't want credit, fame, and they are not making fun of the phenomenon. There are not motives. There are no reasons why we should consider this a hoax. Because if this is a hoax, it costs money when we don't even know the name of this man. Why would be the reason to make this joke if he's not going to enjoy it? Nobody or very few people, for example, know about this case. Why would, I, would he spend money not to prove anything? Then, <laughs> then, then, then. Before I present you this story, I need to introduce you to this. This is probably the most important case ever. What you are just going to watch. Why? Because there is physical evidence that can be used to prove that this case is real. In November 30th, 2005, I went to Merida, Yucatan. I had a presentation there. We were making an investigation with our friends in Merida, the investigators, Emilio Set and Gustavo Aleman. And they, we were taking dinner the night before, very late, 11 o'clock, and they said, had you seen the video that is running from cellular to cellular? And I said, no, I, I haven't. Do you want to see it? Well, I mean, it's probably one more video. No, no, Jaime, you can see an extraterrestrial. And I said, what? Can you take me? And then we have to go around Merida. We found one young man who had this video around 12.30, 1 o'clock in the morning. He allowed me to make a copy through, through his cellular to my cellular. I took this to a computer, 
and I blew it up, and I saw exactly what it is. I was very impressed. Next morning, first thing, 8 o'clock in the morning, I went to the place. I found exactly the exact place where this happened. I found when I was making the investigation there, the actual witnesses of the case, Jose Alonso Herrera and uh, David Espada. This, I didn't know them, and they were there. The first thing I asked, is this case real? And they said, yes, this case is real. We don't know what it is. Was this a joke that made someone to you? No, it's not a joke. We don't know about the joke. Then I presented this case first in Merida, then in Mexico City, in the national television. After I presented it, the case was taken to the front page of the second largest paper in Mexico, Milenio. And they said they made fun of Maussan. These young kids declare that all this was a joke. I talked to them and I said, did you declare this? And they said, no, nobody has come to see us. This is a complete lie. They are attacking us now and we haven't talked to anyone. It means that the media made up this story to discredit this incredible video. Everybody in Mexico is talking about it. You know, they dedicated editorials to this video, saying Jaime Maussan deserves it. <laughs> they made fun of him. <laughs> he deserves this. Finally, somebody did it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> We've been waiting for this for so long. <laughs> Finally, somebody got him, you know, by the throat. And then I said to the, to the paper, no, they made fun of you. Not me, you. No, it's not true, no. Talk to the witnesses. And they had to talk to the witnesses. And the witnesses say, it's true. Everything you wrote is a lie. And they have to say it in the newspaper. For the first time then, they have to take it. Instead of making fun of me, they were making fun of them. More important than anything else, more important. I found a scientist, a scientist who is who has taken readings in the place and who has found energy levels. Well, let me present first the video and then we talk about it. This, is, this is the video taken by the cellular phone, video camera. Watch yes. the post in the left, uh, in the back. The hour to uh, two o'clock in the morning. Two boys. <laughs> playing with the pole. Then, look what is going to appear there. There. This is a second zoom. And look. Now look closely. Once again, there. Then it shows again. There. Now in slow motion, look. Look at the head. Now the arm. Now it's going to take, now it's taking the arm of the boy. Now he's pulling the boy to him. Trying to pull him. And he stops. The size, the size of the arm is more than one meter and ten centimeters. Now it's clearer. This is an enhancer, enhancer the contrasted version. This is the frame still, where you can see the length of the arm. Here. A bald head. And also you can see that it's it, it, you cannot see legs, 
So it seems that it's floating. It gives the impression that it's behind the post, but it's not behind the post. It's just a short, more, uh, more, more far from the floor, from the lamp post. However, we don't know if it's floating, if it appears from nowhere. I, I, I don't know. It doesn't matter. What it matters is. <laughs> What it matters is that a scientist took an instrument, a Geiger, and he recorded very high radiation in the place, very high frequency radiation and very low frequency ra radiation, so low that it's, it's uh, unheard of, or so high that it's unheard of, 49 rodents. Rothens? Rothens. Per, per hour, I think, or per minute? I don't know. So somebody knows it's very, very high. They took rocks, plants, and even some parts of the post to a laboratory because the radiation was as high or higher than Chernobyl. Okay. They were scared. But they found that the plants, the rocks, and everything there didn't have the radiation in it. Then they took the Geiger again, and they found the same energy there. What proves that the energy is just there floating. It's in the space. It's like a hole in the space. And this is why this is probably the most important case ever, because any scientist can go there now with a Geiger counter and have exactly the same readings. The energy is still there since March the 20th. The same level. It hasn't reduced a bit. For that reason, I challenge any scientist, any American crew, any media that wants to go there and take the special equipment and measure there if there is energy, and they are going to find it. If they find it, then they will have to accept that it's not understandable what is going on there. We have, for the first time, physical evidence, it's something that we never had in the UFO encounters. It's very difficult to have that kind of evidence. I hope that someone takes this challenge in the U.S. and takes the risk and go there and do their own investigation. This is... This is Jose Alonso Herrera and this is David Espada. These are the two kids, 18-year-old kids. This is the phone that they use. After I presented this video, some people were saying that I paid these kids some like $1,000 to produce the video, and that they were selling the phone in $200,000. This is the, the, the test made by scientist Jorge Guerrero at the sighting uh, He's a master, a master in science, Jorge Guerrero, in physics, mathematics, and astronomy. Now look at the readings of the, of the Geiger counter. Look at the readings at the top. And the scientist says, and there is more. There is more, but the, my, 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 my counter doesn't give me more, but there are more. So he defined this uh, disturbance in the air or in the space. He defined it like a quantum vortex. It's at the top. It's at the top. They couldn't read more. So he's, he was, he is completely surprised and disconcerted by this strange, extremely rare phenomena. He is explaining how this uh, counter works, how it's reading something extremely unusual and also expressing his uh, disconcert and uh, wondering 
What is happening right here, we don't, we don't understand. We have to continue. But the most important thing is when he, they were approaching, before they, they get to the exact spot, the, the counter was reading nothing, nothing. And just when they got near to the spot, four then the counter... Away. Just yes. four meters away the spot. When they approached to the, to the lamppost, then the counter began reading to the top. There is a distortion in space and time in the place. What he thinks is that the a, a, a dimensional vortex open and close. That's what really thinks he happened, and the energy remains there, has remained there for so long, and I think it will remain even longer. Now, this analysis made by scientist Jorge Guerrero uh, confirms as a fact that an extremely rare phenomena took place in this exact spot in uh, this neighborhood, in this, in this point, uh, an extre extremely rare phenomena this, that is still existing down there. And at this moment, he's explaining that the radiation doesn't get into his body and doesn't get into the animals or plants or the people that is around. Otherwise, this area should have been uh, emptied, evacuated, because he thought it was dangerous, but nothing happens. And here's where he's saying, this is not explainable. And this finding is one of uh, his uh, most uh, uh, discussed and uh, disconcerting findings for him as a scientist, because he, he cannot explain how is it possible that with his how high amounts of radiation that that cannot harm people. And as you are seeing them, they all are there, and they don't feel sick, they don't feel anything anything unusual. And these tests were made before, uh, along with the media. They gathered the media, the newspaper, and also the researchers. They made these tests in front of the media, in front of the, 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 the researchers, in front of the people, so there was no doubt about what they were going to find down there. If they will not find anything, they will go as well. But then the attitude of the newspaper changed since that day. I am now paying these scientists to make a whole investigation on this. He has taken more than 20 readings so far. We are going to publish a book. We are going to pres a, present a full investigation because now we think that any time that there is a report on an abduction or a presence of these creatures, we should take these counters, these machines, to, to measure the energy there, because I think we found the way many times these creatures can be transported into Earth. I believe there is a relation between this and what we got in Ramos Arispe, this hole in the sky. I think we are now understanding how all this is happening. Now, at the end of this, uh, sta uh, this stage of the investigation, the scientist Jorge Guerrero made a challenge on national TV to other scientists from Mexico, not only from uh, Yucatan, to come to this place, to make their own test, and to compare his findings, his results. And three universities from Merida responded to that challenge and sent in, in different times, their own team of uh, professors and scientists to make the same uh, uh, test, the same analysis, and the three of them found exactly the same results. So that's the, uh, the actual status of this investigation. Now, uh, last year, here, I presented you the agrogram that appeared on August the 3rd, 2004. Crop circle. The crop circle. Yeah. And I predicted that in 2005, we will probably have something very similar related to the Mayas. We have been able to even decode this 
figures that appeared last year. Just let me present you something we did. I'm not an expert in this field. I leave it to my friends in England. But I prepared something very nice for the site. I hope you enjoyed this. This is the season of 2005. We believe that the figures that appear from May to August are to be interpreted. But there are some that appear on August, in the second week of August normally, that are, are there to be decoded. The perfection of this amazed me. The size. And I present you all of this to understand what is happening right now with these Mayan prophecies.
Okay, now, as you see, this is the la just the last season, but then everything started in the year 2000 for me with these messages from August. This was the first one. As you remember, this was related to the message of the stars that appear the year after. You remember this face, three-dimensional face. When you put a filter through this face, you can see it's a real, it's a real face from a real being because you can see the light and the shadow that the light creates, and this is real. Four days later, in 2001, remember, it's the same place and the same dates of which happened the year before, the year 2000. This is the message to the stars. We have talked about this, what it means, the number system, the atoms of life, etc. The chemistry of the DNA, the size of the genome, but what is more important? And we have here at the end the presentation of the object they used to create this figure and it's exactly what it was there the year before. Then, I understood that they told us to be ready for that kind of dates. And from that year, 2001, I've been waiting always for what happens in the middle of August. All the figures are important to me. But for me, the most important are one, those who are there to be decoded. All of you remember this. I went there. The, I didn't find many scientists or many investigators in this field, and I stayed there for, for a week or so. Not too many people went. It was at the very end of the season. And as you know, this being decoded, this is the, the binary code again with a clear message. Beware with the bears of the false presence and, uh, and the false promises. And false promises. Much pain, but still time. Believe there is still good out there, and we oppose deception. The conduit is closing. The year after, I don't know if this is the what represents the message for that year because it was a very strange year, 2003. I don't know. But then in 2004, we had this. I explained is related to the long count calendar, to the Mayan calendar. Of 2012. As we know, 2012 is the end of the Mayan calendar. Why? Because at that time the solar system is going to pass in front of the center of the galaxy. It's the closest we can be every 20, 25,000 years. And we will be aligned with the Milky Way. Can that create energy that is going to affect us? Probably. Nobody knows, it's all kinds of hypotheses. But then, what I predicted here a year ago that was going to happen. And it happened. In August 9th and August 13, 2005, exactly what I was expecting to happen, it happened. We have two new messages with Mayan uh, Herbis. Yes.
And I think this is very important. Because now we have some dates. For the year 2012, and I will explain. we have this is calling to the return of the plummet serpent we found here the words Christ, Messiah catastrophe eclipse and many others there are real experts in Mexico working on this at the center is life and God this is pure Mayan. It appeared on August 13, the exact date of the beginning of the Mayan calendar, in 3,114 years before Christ. This must be related to the end of the Mayan calendar and something that is going to happen in 2012. I don't believe in catastrophe. I don't believe the world is going to be destroyed. But something very important is going to happen. There are so many prophecies, even in the Bible, even the prophecies of Jesus. And then we have this, which is related to the Sol King, the sacred calendar of the Mayan. The Mayan use this calendar to measure the cycles of one person. Our gestation lasts for 260 days. That's the time of the... Of the uh, of this calendar, the sacred calendar, 260 days. They had two calendars, one sacred and one solar. You can see this is an amazing figure with so much information in here. It's like the Aztec calendar in here. Now let me explain you this. I can use both, but I had to use one. Okay, here is the, this half circle is the number, the day zero. The day zero is when the Pleiades, the sun and the earth are joined together. And that's the 20th of May. Here in the middle, we have an eclipse, uh, an annular eclipse, a partial eclipse of the sun. And this is going to happen exactly the 20th of May, 2012. And then we have the number 16 in here. 16 days later, after the eclipse, is going to be the transit of Venus in, in front of the sun. Now we have 4 times 13. 4 times 13 is 52. 52 is the new fire. Every 52 years, the sacred calendar and the, and the solar calendar go to the same day, to the same start. That means that this is related to the new, to the new fire, the new eras that they celebrate every, every 52 years. And also we have here the number 20. 20 and there were 13 months of 20 days in the sulking. All this proves that this is the Sulkin calendar. And we have these dates, the 20th of May, and we have also the, the 6th of June. We have two weeks. I don't know what it means, but we have to remember. And again, as I said, this is more or less saying it's going to be the return of Quetzalcoatl, of Kukulkan, of the Messiah, something 
important. I don't know if it's related because both of them are so close together. Both of them appear. And this is the eclipse of May the, 12, of May the 20th, 2012. It's going to be seen here, United States and Mexico too. Also in half of the world. Okay, then. Now, uh, a very spectacular video recorded November 27th, 2005, by a man who has muscular dystrophy. He is prisoner in his room. All he has is a little window. And you cannot imagine what kind of videos he has recorded. Someday we have to make a recognition to this young kid who has been there for years, just along with his camera. And he got this very spiritual video that touched me very, very deep. Pedro Avila is one of our most famous and respected uh, sky watchers, experiencers, that has provided this investigation, wonderful videos, very important videos to this research since, since 1994. He's a very uh, admirable uh, young man that uh, that morning of November 2005, he witnessed something extremely rare, something that he hasn't seen before and uh, Nobody I, must tell, <laughs> I must tell that uh, this sighting that you are about to see took us by surprise. So watch carefully and make your own opinion. Like angels in the sky, moving, playing, flying, Look at that, look how they move. This is what people saw many, many years ago. Look how they move, fly, play. What it seems to be a group of uh, luminous figures or luminous bodies with human shape interacting, according to Pedro Avila, they were like dancing together, like playing together. And uh, he was completely surprised. Something never seen before. The so, video lasts for half an hour. Yes, a very long video. And then the 29th of January, 2006 in Guadalajara, Miguel Aguila, the same man who got this incredible fleet in 2004, got this video. The quality is not the same, but I believe it's the same phenomenon. And then I think we're going to still have, we're going to have more and more of these kind of videos very soon. Because I, lear I have learned that. Ten years ago we had some fleets, and now it's incredible. And now this is the beginning of, for this kind of phenomenon that is unexplainable to me. So now we are wondering, are we confronting a new phenomena, a new sign? What could this meaning, uh, what could this uh, group of strange luminous figures with humanoid shape mean? Could this be a new sign? So uh, we have several interpretations, you know. Uh, could this be some kind of beams of light, you know, the so, so famous beams of light? Could this be some kind of uh, holographic projections? sent to us from above? Could this be, as Jaime said, and some people could think, could this be the, I mean, a manifestation of the angels or something similar? We don't know. But we are expecting, we are confident that uh, if this is a new sign, if this is a new phenomena, we will receive more of these signs. And we are looking forward in this research 
because we are uh, expecting to get some answers to these still uh, puzzling uh, manifestation in the sky over Mexico City. No estamos. We are not alone. No we have no never been alone. El the universe only overflows the with intelligent life. Tenemos we have a close interrelation with an advanced intelligence Desde since the beginning of our history. Esta this revelation es is not only important for the people of the United States or for the people of Mexico. It is important for all the people around the world. This reality is so powerful and so incredibly beautiful that my vision and my personal understanding is that if the people participate in this, if the truth is known, if the people are allowed to show this reality, the reality that we are not alone and that we have never been alone, that by itself will cause an enormous expansion of consciousness to the, to the human race. Robert Dean, veteran sergeant of the U.S. Army Forces. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
guys are done. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, yes.